Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? Yesterday, when I got done with everything, I went over to the feed store and I picked up a bale of hay. The last time that I had seen hay out there, it was saying $85 a bale. But today I went over there and it's 125. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna buy it anyway. I'm already here, right? So I'm just gonna buy it. And it's a little 600 pound roll of hay. Uh, well, uh, I mean, it, it's a good, uh... okay. So when, when hay is in season, you know, next year, I keep telling myself to do this, but every once in a while, uh, well, uh, about two or three times a year, everybody will be cutting hay and the hay prices will drop. I could get a bale of hay for $55, $60 on the internet. Uh, a bale of sorghum Sudan grass hay for $55, $60. And I should just, you know, well, I don't really want to buy a truckload of hay because if I buy a truckload of hay, that's like 21 bales. And then I'm gonna have to put in, tw I'm gonna have to keep 21 bales around here somewhere. But, uh, and well, I've, but a lot of people are, are cutting up uh, corn right now, chopping up corn. And I'm considering, and a, a, a bale of a corn stover of corn residue is $35 a bale right now. And that stuff, when it comes to the winter time, it's very good for bedding. But $35 a, a, a bale for 20 bales, that's $700. But I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna have to spend the money anyway, right? Cause when it starts raining a lot and when it starts uh, getting, uh, but then it's like, where do I put 21 bales of hay? You know, do I just leave them out? Well, I mean, I could just leave them out. Well, I'll have to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to figure that out because if I buy the hay when it's in season, I, I get a chance to buy it for very cheap. And so this little bale of hay, to put things in perspective, I got this bale of hay for $125, right? And, I, and these small bales of hay, I could probably roll five or six of them per acre. If, 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 I, if I were to get one good month of grass, of growing grass, I could probably grow about five to six of those an acre, probably closer to six. And you know, uh, I have 10 acres here, so I could grow about 60, 60 bales of that hay, and it cost me about a $500 to, to grow uh, 60 bales of that hay. So that puts every kind of things in perspective of why it's so important to grow grass. Uh, but you know, uh, well, I mean, if it were up to me, I'd be growing grass right now too, but it's been it's been over a hundred for about a week straight and it's gonna stay over a hundred. I mean, it's like 106, 105, 106 with full sunshine every day. And it's gonna stay like that for another week or two. So, uh, yep, e e uh, even if I did get some rain, the grass ain't really going to grow because it's too hot. It's just way too hot. I mean, I would need such a, a large amount of water. It, it, I mean, the only way that I would really get that amount of water at this time of year is through uh, irrigation. And I don't have irrigation. Hey, Lucy, I don't know how the dogs keep jumping back here. Lucy, come here. Yeah, but I don't like my dogs getting around the cattle because, you know, a, a lot of animals, horses, cattle, donkeys, do not like dogs. And it, they, they will, it, the, the dogs will freak the animals out sometimes. And the animals, if they freak out, you know, I always say there is zero benefit to having my animals freak out. You know, uh, there's, there's really zero benefit to, to pushing cattle to a point where they start panicking. I mean, it's not good. It, I mean, it could put me at danger. It could put me at risk. My dogs have gotten kicked before. I mean, it's 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 bad. And so I just, I, I try and teach, I teach the dogs to not come back here. But Lucy saw Jack back here and she, she came running back over here too. But Jack's always running around over here. But yeah, but there's zero reason to really freak a, a bovine out. I mean, you know, if, if, if at all possible, just keep them, just keep the, just keep the cattle as calm as possible. But one of these little heifers, one of these little black Angus heifers, I don't know which one it is exactly. But yesterday I came back here with a feed bucket and she was kind of just sniffing around in the air. And I was like, what is that? I was like, uh, that, that's not normal behavior. And so I went over there and I looked at her. I just kind of took a good look at her and she has pink eye real bad. Uh, one of her eyes is pink eye so bad that she's practically gone blind in it. And so uh, yesterday I got a hold of her and I gave her a, a shot of uh, LA 200 oxytetracycline and, and uh, tomorrow I'm gonna take a look at her and, and make sure it's getting better. 
and I may need to give her a second shot or I may need to give her a, a sulfamethazine pill or something. I may have to give her another shot, but I'll have to see how that works out. But uh, she, she had it so bad that it was a, there was a, a, a patch in her eye. Uh, so her eye had completely gone clouded over and then there was a, a patch in the middle of it. So it was it was to that point where it was it was that severe. And so I, I, I you know, Princess had, had had pink eye that bad one time a long while ago. And uh, if and she she got fixed right up, but I had to give her two shots of oxytetracycline as well. And so this calf, I don't know which one it is, but one it's one of the black Angus heifers, but I'm gonna keep an eye on her and make sure that her eye, uh, her eye clears up because I definitely don't want a blind calf. Uh, if, if she goes blind in one of her eyes, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good. And so I gotta take, so yeah, I gotta take some of these animals to market, but I'm kind of debating, you know, cause next week it's supposed to be 106, it's supposed to be 106 like all week. It's supposed to be 106 up until like uh, maybe August 20th. And I need to be buying calves at around September 16th. And but realistically, I'd like to buy a. You see these calves? These he's not these these animals. They're not bad looking, right? I probably get some good money for these animals. I mean this this one right here. He he ain't he ain't too bad. Uh, this beef master. They ain't too bad. I mean all of these animals. When all in all considered, I think I'll make some decent money on them. I mean could 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 I really put more weight on them? I probably could. Um, but it's just, it's, it, I mean, if I was finishing cattle, I would think about things differently. I'm just, I'm just really kind of here to just keep the cattle a, a little bit fat, get them a little bit fat and then, uh, get them to about seven, 800 pounds, seven, eight weight, and then take them to market. That, that's my whole goal. And so these animals are, are they, are they, are they massively fat? I mean, they could be fatter. Realistically, they could, and I could probably push them a little bit harder if I fed them, uh, if I fed them some uh, real expensive grass, or if I had grass growing here myself, I could probably uh, get them growing a bit faster. Uh, but it, you know, in terms of buying hay, it's not. Uh, but he, here's the thing, another thing about hay, right? Is that if I pay $125, hey Jack, come here, Jack, come here, Bubba. If I pay $125 for a 600 pound roll, let's say I get a three and a third of them for uh, for one ton, right? That's like uh, that's like $400 a ton for for grass hay, and I get I can get I can get grain for $300 a ton, and grain is way more valuable to me than than grass. Grain is, is way better for these for these cattle than grass is uh, in terms of uh, well, I mean to a certain point they need both. They realistically they need both. But in terms of, of keeping the animals uh, gaining weight and and, and and being healthy, the grain, it, it, it's better at doing it than grass is. Unless I grow the grass here myself and I know that the quality of the grass is high enough to give these animals their nutritional requirements. Because if I grow and if I go to the feed store, right, and I buy a grass hay, I don't know if the, if, if the person there was really on top of uh, keeping track of their grass and making sure that the grass was properly fertilized and making sure that it was harvested at the perfect time and stuff like that. A lot of these people who grow hay, they, they don't they don't harvest their hay at the right time. They harvest their hay when they're going to get the maximum yield. Lucy, come here. So they they harvest their hay for maximum yield. They they don't. They don't harvest their hay for maximum uh, maximum quality. Most people don't. And so, but if I grow the grass here myself, I can grow 10 acres of grass, you know, uh, for, for, it costs me, well, if, if I'm gonna grow it for hay, it, it costs me about twice as much because I can fertilize it about twice as heavy. But if I, if I, gra if I, uh, if I grow it for grazing, if I grow it to graze these cattle on, it cost me about half as much. I, I put about one tonnage of fertilizer on the grass uh, a month if I'm gonna grow it for uh, for grazing. But if I'm gonna grow it for hay, I can I can I can just about double that. Uh, yeah, just about double it. I, I can just about double it if I'm gonna grow it for uh, for for uh, chopping or for uh, for cutting hay. And so. You know, and, and a tonnage of fertilizer right now is about a uh, $275 a ton. And so, uh, yep, uh, I mean, growing the grass myself, way, 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 way cheaper. I mean, if, if I grow the grass myself, I can grow it for about uh, for about $20 a ton. With, with the prices where they are right now, I can grow it for, it costs about $20 a ton. And these animals will just walk around and chew on it and eat it up themselves. And but if I really wanted to put weight on these calves right now, on these on these cattle right now, they're they're practically all yearlings at this point. Just about Jack, come here, Bubba. 
But if, if I want to put weight on these animals, I need to put more forage in them. I can't put any more grain in them. It's always going to make them sick. And the only realistic way for me to, to get grass uh, at, at a cost-efficient price point is to, is to grow it myself. And to grow it myself, I need to wait for the weather to, turn, uh, for the weather to, to change here, to go into fall. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.